All right, everyone, what is going on? Eric here again with Traveling Trading. Back at it with you again with another lesson. Um, we're going to get into this here. I think it's very important. Before we kind of move forward, of course, you know, do me a favor, give me that thumbs up, comment below, subscribe, et cetera, et cetera. Helps out a lot to show your love and appreciation. But without further ado, we're going to get into today's lesson here of FOMO. All right. Now, for those of you who already know about FOMO, this is going to be a great video for you if you're having trouble with it. Those of you who don't know about it, <laughs> you've been in the market long enough, you're going to get real, real familiar with it. So this is something I wish I would have known as a trader, um, especially starting out in the beginning that I knew existed because I probably would have been saving myself thousands of dollars. And even till the to this day, I still kind of struggle with it, too. Um, but not as so much as, as I used to once I kind of, you know, was able to identify it and understand what it is and all that good stuff. It, you know, helps put things into perspective as a trader. But FOMO is going to be very important consistently throughout your trading career. And this is very important for all types of traders, whether you're an investor, swing trader, day trader, scalper, doesn't matter. All right. Um, all of us fall victim to it. And this is why. For those of you that are viewing this in the trading course, you're finding it in the psychological part, you know, section of the course because this is what's gonna is gonna deal with, for the most part. Um, and you'll see how that correlates to your trading on a day-to-day -day basis. And of course, if you already viewed this on YouTube or whatever, um, go ahead and move on to the next section of the course. Um, but those of you who don't, let's go ahead and get into it and uh, work on this bad boy here. Do excuse me if I'm, um, you know, sipping water and things like that. Still recovering a little bit, but um, I definitely wanted to go through this section here with you guys, okay? So we're going to pretty much talk about FOMO. Um, and a lot of times you'll find this is what's going to separate your losing days and your winning days when it comes to your trading. Um, today was a prime example for me of, you know, FOMO kicking in because we had some great runners today, but today I didn't place a trade. This is probably the first uh, day all this year that I did not trade today. Not because that there wasn't no good runners. I mean, we had 100, 200% gaining runners that we got on the alerts and everything like that. And even on the watch list, if you were trading that you could have took advantage of, the, the same watch list I designed for you guys day in and day out. Um, you know, the opportunities were there. I just, I don't know. I just, I just wasn't feeling it. I didn't want to force a trade and... FOMO began to kick in because everyone in the chat room and stuff like that was, you know, gaining traction and stuff like that, but it's fine. Um, but let's go ahead and kind of talk about it and I'll, you know, end with that little recap and how that affected me as well, too, and how it might affect you as a trader. But I find that a lot of my trades that I made, especially in the beginning, that were wrong was because of this. Um, so, yeah, hopefully you guys learn a little bit about it and be able to, you know, tackle it. So, the objective of this video, especially in this course, this portion of the, the course, if you're viewing it here um, or whether you're watching it on YouTube, uh, whatever, uh, we're going to discuss what FOMO is. We're going to discuss what causes FOMO and we're going to talk about how to, you know, overcome it and avoid it, too. So, you know, this is going to be a great video, I think, for some of you guys who may not know about this, especially as new traders. It's going to be very, very beneficial for you. All right. So let's kind of get into it. What is FOMO? FOMO is the fear of missing out. <clears throat> You'll hear this a lot, um, you know, throughout trading period or just, you know, in the financial markets or really almost in anything in general. I mean, in, a, in your social life, um, et cetera, et cetera. I mean, the fear of missing out is just a psychological, you know, aspect of human nature. You know, you don't want to miss out on, you know, opportunities. That's just how it is as a, you know, as a person. Now, new traders fall victim to this a lot, especially, you know, new traders who don't really know much or experience and they end up taking wrong trades. And this is why you'll hear a lot of times like time in the market is very important because as a trader and being in the market for so long, you'll understand why I tell you guys all the time, hey, don't worry about it. Another one's coming. Another one's coming. Another one's coming. You understand why time in the market is, is important because 
as you're in the market more and more, you'll see that, oh, okay, this can't happen again. It's not happening. It's not a once in a lifetime event. It's going to happen again. It's going to happen again. It's going to happen again. That's just part of the job. Most new traders don't understand that. They'll see, you know, um, stock XYZ run up 50%, another stock run up 70%, 100%, 200%. And they're thinking, man, this will never happen again. And this is how you kind of get sucked into making bad trades. But again, time in the market will fix that. So let's kind of go into it. All right. Now, what causes FOMO? Again, it is a very psychological and emotional mindset that traders develop for various factors that can lead to it. Things such as fear. Um, and that's why it starts as, you know, FOMO, fear of missing out. That's like the number one thing. Many traders, you know, manifest this fear because, you know, they're afraid of the future regrets they might have for not taking advantage of a, of a trade, thinking they're going to miss out on something great. We all fall victim to that, okay? Um, the next reason why it might happen is because of greed. Another emotional state, you know, this typically is, you know, traders buying without doing any kind of research or anything like that. They're just jumping into the trade with no rhyme or reason. Just trying to be greedy. Just trying to get, you know, trying to get some extra cash. I mean, that's just how it is. Another reason is anxiety. Um, you know, buyers are anxious about, you know, being left behind on rallies all the time. I mean, it was even mentioned today in some of the chat rooms. Some of you guys were like, you know, I don't know how to, you know, I'm afraid to take the trade. I'm afraid to take the trade. You're just anxious because you don't want to miss on that opportunity and be left behind in the rally. You want to be in it, which is understandable. It's just a normal, normal thing. Okay. Um, another thing that might cause it is jealousy. I know for me as a trader, especially in the beginning, oh man, the, the, the times that I had, you know, that happen and kick in. It's just basically, you're, you know, something you're going to get as a trader, especially if you're a competitive person like I am by nature. That's just how I am. Um, you're jealous about other traders' performance, how they're doing good and, and, you know, what they're doing in their investing results and like that stuff and their trading results. Jealousy just kicks in. And that's why a lot of times in the chat room, too, I don't like to typically post like my trades or gains too much and stuff like that. You know, I try to use it every now and then just as motivation for you guys, but I'm not you know, shout out me getting in and out of the trades and stuff like that, because my experience is going to be much more different than yours. But also too, you know, that could create jealousy, which is going to create FOMO, which is going to make you a bad trader. You know, that's not really good to do. That's why I just recap my trades after they're done. So you guys can kind of have an understanding and try to look for it, the same thing or something similar to, to what fits your style into your next trade. But for me, I know like a lot of times I would be in um, other chat rooms, other groups, and I'm seeing all these traders posting uh, even even now to to the day to the day, sometimes FOMO can kick in. I mean, we got great traders in the chat room. You know, like Derek. I mean, all you guys. I mean, you know, you're good. At, a lot of you are, are way better at trading and making way more gains than I am. <laughs> and I'm the one trying to you know teach this stuff. But you know, and that's you know, I've seen progress for a lot of traders too as well. They I've seen them you know start out bad and become way better traders than me, which is great. I mean. I've learned to like, you know, be loving that now. Back in the day when I was just trying to be, you know, a best, the best trader and make all this money, all that stuff, jealousy would kick in a lot. And that would create FOMO where I'm trying to get into a trade that they have already been in because the trade fits their plan. And I didn't realize that I'm just chasing and chasing and chasing. Um, and jealousy just kicks in because they're doing so well. But yet here I am. We're in the same chat room, getting the same alerts, et cetera, et cetera. But yet they're making money and I'm losing money. Jealousy kicks in and you start taking trades that you shouldn't be taking in the first place. Happens a lot. And sometimes, you know, I tell you guys too, like, you know, sometimes you got to just tune that stuff out. Sometimes you got you to get out of the chat rooms, especially for you new traders. Get out of the chat rooms. Um, you know, get, stop looking at that stuff. Don't look at that. I mean, you could be in there for com camaraderie and, you know, be able to get some insight and pointers from other traders. But don't compare your results to them. That's just going to create a lot of jealousy there, enviousness. So don't do that. And then, of course, you know, another cause of it is impatience. Many, many times, you know, traders are usually impatient because they didn't, you know, again, do enough research and, you know, look at the market and take the steps that they needed to take to analyze the situation to see the trade that they're going to take is going to be worth them tra taking a trade into. Happens quite often, too. Um, these are some of the biggest factors of what causes uh, FOMO. OK, so kind of keep that in mind. And you want to try to recognize that as you're as you're, you know, trading. Some other causes, excuse me, of course, is, you know, losing money on a stock and just watching it run 
you know, without me. I mean, that I've had that happen a lot, um, <laughs> especially in the beginning. Um, you know, when you when you get into a trade and you cut your loss, and sometimes you'll cut it too quickly, and now the stock is doing what you thought it would do. Now you want to jump in the trade and try to chase it, and it just gets bad. It gets very, very bad. You don't want to do that, guys. Um, so keep that in mind. Um, that can be a causation. Learn to just learn to just walk away sometimes. Hesitating, <coughs> excuse me, and um, and watching it run. It's much more better to do that than to be impulsive. To be honest with you, it's okay to miss a trade because, like I said, guess what? Another one will come. You just got to live by that model, really. Um, but yeah, hesitating and just watching the stock run, I do that still to this day sometimes a lot too, where I'm like, mm, should I get into it? Should I not get into it? And that's just because at that point, I'm not really, you know, analyzing the trade probably like I should be. And I understand that. Um, but you got to be okay with missing out sometimes on that on those kind of trades. But hesitating and watching it run and now you're carrying it over to the next trade, it can cause you to not see things clearly and make bad trades. But it's better than being impulsive and just trying to jump in and jump in. But, you know, it's like a it's like a balance you got to find uh, going from green to red. This will also fall along the lines into what I talk about, not only just FOMO, but with revenge trading. Again, we'll go do that section here in the course next uh, in a second. But, yeah, going from green to red can not only cause FOMO and re revenge trading as well, too. So um, that's another cause of it. You got to be understand. got to be able to recognize that as an advanced trader. Look at your trades, review them. Have you seen any instances where you FOMO to trade, you know? Again, watching someone else do good, that's along the lines with that jealousy. And um, one of the other things, of course, too, was just slow market times. Um, you know, slow market times where you're just sitting there on your hands, waiting and waiting and waiting. And now you're seeing the stock move and you're thinking, yeah, this might be good to get into. And it's not really a good trade because there was no actual setup there. There's no reason to get into this thing. The numbers are just thought, like it's just no reason, no no reason for you to get in that trade at all. It's not fitting your criteria. You're just trying to really force the trade at that point. Just because you've been sitting there all day or maybe even all week or so and haven't made a trade, and now you're just anxious to make a trade just to make a trade. Don't do that, okay? Um, don't do that. Slow market times will come. Every day is a trading day, but not every day is your trading day. And I preach that to you guys all the time be selective okay so those are some of the causes that you know what happens to cause um you know traders to just make trades doing fomo <laughs> for example like the little illustration there watching a trade rip after missing your entry creates fomo all right so what are some ways that you can avoid this um really it just kind of boils down to discipline and of course that's something psychological whatever you can to do to work on your discipline as a trader and sticking to your rules is, you know, what you want to do. Um, have that discipline as a trader, okay? Um, being able to recognize when it happens. Identify that your trade that you're going into is a, is a FOMO trade. You just got into it, get into it, because you're seeing it running. Now your eyes are lighting up and you're picturing all this money you can have. And, you know, you're just jumping into the trade because of that. There's no actual rhyme or reason on it, or you're creating false rhymes or reasons to get into the trade just so you can hope that it goes good. You got to recognize when you're doing these kind of trades, okay? Um, especially if you have no target, no profit target, um, and things like that, you're just, you're just going to fall victim to that, okay? Um, another way to avoid it, change your position size. What I mean by that is try scaling back in your position. If you're trading normally with, you know, 1,000 shares, cut that down to 500, do you still feel the same way emotionally about the trade? Cut it down to 100. Cut it down to 10. Are you, you know, are you feeling the same way about this stock now that you're only going to make $3, $4, $5? not, you know, <laughs> then there you go. That's your answer. So, changing position size definitely helps you avoid, you know, with a stock and that's why you'll see a lot of times especially with me for those of you who are in the advanced trading course and we're going to go over risk management, how I talk about the positions and scaling and what size you should be selective at what dollar amounts and that's why i do that because that helps me avoid fomo and for the most time i have like just a set you know a set amount of uh, shares that i use on certain trades at certain dollars amounts but also too you want to you know be able to scale in and scale out and not every trade is going to be the same i'm not going to always trade every 
you know, tr every, you know, stock the same amount of shares. You don't want to do that. And of course, one of the biggest ways to avoid this, um, and it, you know, it's just be selective. Um, you guys ever wonder why I'm only posting one or two trades throughout the day? It's not because I'm not, you know, I mean, again, I show you guys my losses and my gains, but it's because I'm literally only doing one or two trades a day, th one to three, maybe on average. At the most, I want to do maybe five trades a day. And that's if I'm in the market all day. Okay. Because I'm very selective about which stock I pick, which stock I choose. And I make sure that the stock that I'm looking at is meeting all the criteria on the checklist that I showed you guys in the beginning course and that it's working out for me and that it's doing what I think is going to do and pretty much fit in that hypothesis and all that good stuff. And I'm very selective because I don't want to take too many trades. Um, I mean, not only could that, you know, if you have a commission broker kill, you know, commissions can eat up your profits, as you guys learn in the books I tell you about, um, but also just it makes you a better trader. You want to trade like your life depends on it, because technically your trading career, if you're doing this for a living, does. And that's how, you know, you want to kind of look at it. So you're, you're going to try to choose the right one, you know, um, kind of look at it. You're not marrying the stock. You're marrying your decision. That's the difference, you know. Um, so. I've, I've said that before as well, too, for, for a lot of you guys that, you know, understand. That's why you only see me, you know, post one or three trades a day. And I'm letting the trade play out because I've committed to it. I needed to do, I wanted to do what I wanted to do. If it doesn't, I'm okay with taking that loss because I sat there, took the time and analyzed it the way I need to analyze it. And it's fitting all the criteria and stuff that I want. Not every trade is going to be the way you want. So understand that being selective. That's how you can avoid FOMO. I'm not worried about this stock that ran 100%. Because where it's at now and where I would get into it, it's not fitting my criteria. Oh, well, I missed it. Let's go on to the next one. That's that mantra you got to have, okay? Um, and you'll see that here in the next section here. Basically, you know, overcoming it, okay? Again, the best ways to overcome FOMO is uh, spending time in the market and not trading. You'll get used to that because you'll get used to just seeing things happening. You'll get used to making your plan and being selective. The longer you're in the market, the easier it just becomes, uh, you know, to do that. Okay. Um, marking your trades in your trading journal that are FOMO related. Just like I told you guys too, as well, you know, you're going to want to mark the ones that are revenge trades. You're going to also want to mark the ones that are FOMO trades as you're reviewing your trading journal. Understand why you took that trade. It wasn't because, you know, it looked like this, it looked like that. It's because you just took it because all the other stocks are running and you wanted to, you know, get in a trade or you've been sitting around for a long time, you just wanted to trade just to have something to put in your trading journal. It wasn't a real setup. Mark those trades, guys, on how you feel at those times. And this is why psychological portion of your trading is very important. And, um, you know, why in your journal you're going to want to do that is because you're going to be able to identify when these FOMO patterns are kicking in and be able to overcome it. Okay. Um, so, yeah, so make sure you're marking that in your journal. And... Be honest with yourself. I can't repeat that enough. <laughs> a lot of new traders, or just traders in general, hate that part. I mean, it's really hard for a lot of people to look into the mirror. But you got to be truthful with yourself or else the market will be truthful to you. Your trades are going to be a reflect of who you are and how you think and all that good stuff. So if you can't be honest with yourself of why you took a trade and be able to make those decisions and correct them, then there's no, you know, you might as well just stop trading. And that's why a lot of times it's much harder for like, hate to say this, but I've seen a lot of elderly people, you know, that want to trade have more difficult with it just because by nature, as we get older, we become set in our ways and, you know, think that we're always right kind of thing. And much and younger people are much more willing to like, you know, take the hit, be wrong and, you know, things like that. You just got to learn to learn and be honest with yourself. You know, um, you're not going to always be right. And the market will show you that. And if you can't be honest with that, you're not going to be able to improve or even stay in this market. So save yourself some headache. If you can't look at yourself and be like, dang, I was wrong. Numerous times over, you might as well just stop doing this and go do something else. <laughs> All right. Um, another way to overcome it is exit the trade quickly. When you recognize that you're in a FOMO trade and the trade is not playing out the way that you thought it would, cut it, move on, take your loss, move on, you're done. That's, I can't, it can't get much more simpler than that. <laughs> so that's another way to, to overcome it. Um, or, you know, also to paper trade. I like to tell clients, um, not clients, I like to tell like just people in general just to do that. Um, just paper trade. It Sometimes it helps out just to get that, you know, ample 
trade out of there to just feel like you, you were part of it. Sometimes that helps too. Another thing is sticking to the plan. Stick to your trading plan. Stick to your trading checklist that I go over with you guys in the course. Stick to your trading journal. Reviewing that. Stick to your trading routine. Stick to your stops, etc. Stick to those things and you will overcome FOMO. Because you're so focused on worrying about how the trade is going to play out. You could care less if it runs 100%, 300%, 200%. Or if it goes down, you know, 1,000%, 500%. It doesn't matter. You know why? Because you stuck to your profit taking. You stuck to your profit loss. That was within your trade. Perfectly fine. And, of course, for those of you who are, you know, watching this advanced course and stuff like that, you're going to learn how to let your winners win and scaling in and scaling out so that you can take advantage of other stars. But you want to focus on the core part of your plan and sticking to it. You stick to that, you'll be fine. I promise you. All right. Um, and then, of course, just live by the model that I tell you guys all the time. Hey, don't rush. Don't worry about it. Another one will always come. Picture it like a bus. Miss one, next one, fifth, next 15, another one's coming, okay? Oh, sorry, I got a little Gucci man in my head. But, uh, <laughs> um, yeah, if you know, another trade is coming, guys. There's always going to be another opportunity. Um, the market is not going anywhere. If the market disappeared, we got much more important things to worry about than making money. Trust me. So live by the model that another one's going to come. If I miss it, that's fine. Another one will come because it always will and it always does. Just as sure as the sun comes up, okay? Um, but understand that. So... That's pretty much, you know, what I wanted to kind of leave off on there, you know, with you guys real quick. Like I said, it's going to be a quick, short video. But, hey, you know, we're at the finish line. Um, you know, we kind of just covered what FOMO is, what causes it, how to avoid it, how to overcome it, um, and, you know, just to become a better trader. So take kind of notes here, guys, and, you know, reflect on how this is affecting you and your trading and your plans um, and the way you trade and your trading style. I'd like to hear from you guys too. You know, if you want to tell me about a time that you might have felt, you know, victim to FOMO, you know, comment below in the in the video like what tickers you might have, you know, been experienced with where you have FOMO. There's been a couple of them for me. Um, I mean, today alone with just a few of them. So, but uh, yeah, I mean, I definitely like to hear those stories. So, you know, put the ticker below what you might have felt, you know, victim to when it comes to FOMO. Um, you know, how have you dealt with it in the past? What what happened when that is, you know, something I like to hear too. So, yeah. Um, and plus, to kind of share stories with other traders and help them, you know, feel like they're not alone because we're all in this, you know, kind of together as well too. But hopefully this video helped you guys out, um, you know, a little bit more and you got a good understanding of, you know, what FOMO is. And now you know to look out for it and how it's going to affect your trading and stuff like that. But definitely feel free to, you know, Message me, guys. Email me, etc. DM me, whatever. If you have any questions about anything, I'll be more than happy to try to help you out. Um, you know, again, if you want me to review something for you or just get some input or anything like that, it's perfectly fine. Um, I'm here to help you guys out. But those of you that are watching this in the advanced course, let's go on to the next section. We've got some more stuff to cover, especially in this section here, psychology, because it's going to be a lot. <laughs> and then you got the risk management stuff. I mean, we got a lot to cover. But anyways, you guys stay green out there. Hopefully this helps you out. And until next time. I'll see you again. All right, guys, you know the routine. If you enjoyed that video, please do us a favor, show some support, and hit that like button. Give us that thumbs up. Let us know if you enjoyed this content. Comment below. Let us know your thoughts. We love hearing from you as well, too. Feel free to reach out if you have any questions about anything whatsoever. I'd be more than happy to help you out. Until then, stay green.